Well, uh, good day, everyone. I guess it is actually daytime here <laughs> instead of the early morning of wee hours. And we're continuing now with a treatise on white magic, um, program number 28. We're on rule 3.7, uh, the seventh program on rule 3, and we're on page 119. We've been dealing with all of the many factors that produce the temporary differences among uh, human beings, depending upon their development in time and space. Uh, and we are aware that a rounding out process is also occurring as we move along, but it may not be uh, leading to any kind of identicality between the different emanated units, as even our planetary logoi are distinct, and our um, solar logoi and beyond. But at least it will assure that no evolving human being is devoid of the other aspects of divinity, which are also important. So uh, as the Tibetan summarizes, he basically says, all these factors and many more produce, and he's listed a lot, really, produce differences among human beings, and in sizing himself up, a man must needs bring them into consideration, as we all have to evaluate uh, where we stand and uh, what our equipment is and where it is developed and where it may be deficient. And of course, the solar angel, angel of the presence, will assist us with this by choosing um, some incarnational environments and contacts which will help us uh, make up for our deficiencies. When we um, hopefully will be doing an analysis of Letters on Occult Meditation, a wonderful little book which is by no means simply preliminary, and it will tell us <coughs> excuse me, about how the... Uh, the, the guiding superior forces work to uh, produce the rounding out of the uh, individual. It should be borne in mind, says the Tibetan, that a disciple of any of the masters will have his peculiar equipment, um, his uh, individual assets and deficiencies. I mean, this is uh, clear and it uh, certainly distinguishes each of us from every other because of our uh, unique uh, evolutionary experience over many lives. He can nevertheless uh, rest assured that until the path of knowledge has been added to the path of love, he can never take the major initiations, for these are undergone on the higher levels of the mental plane. Um, well, that's an important statement, and uh, it tells us something about why we want to study with such a teacher as Master D.K., who is uh, replete with knowledge that he can convey to us in a very sound manner. He can nevertheless rest assured that until the path of knowledge has been added to the path of love, and then again, after the knowledge comes universal love, we know that as well, he can never take the major initiations, for these are undergone on the higher levels of the mental plane, um, well, there are some preliminary initiations that occur even before the great monastic initiations, which begin with the birth. Sometimes um, the birth and baptism are called major initiations because they're in the monastic series, but other times they are called simply initiations of the threshold, and the major initiations begin with the third and fourth degrees, which are indeed taken on the higher levels of the metal plane. Beyond that, uh, fifth and sixth initiations, there is no causal body to deal with, and uh, perhaps these initiations are taken within the cosmic ethers. Until the path of light is united to the path of life, the great uh, transition from the fourth into the fifth kingdom can not be taken. Now, when does this transition occur? Uh, is it at the first 
first degree. Uh, let's see, first initiation. And let me see if I can, um, because the word degree is very important, FIDG, and we'll call that the first degree. Um, well, in, in some ways, uh, we are told that uh, we enter the Hall of Wisdom at the first uh, initiation, and uh, we are actually entering the fifth kingdom. But to truly enter that kingdom, I suspect one must be an initiate of the third degree. Uh, a full entry into that kingdom. Okay. Is that the first initiation? A full entry into that kingdom uh, really occurs, I won't rush now, <laughs> occurs at the third degree. Um, T, D, G. And uh, maybe I have ignored that and simply put third initiation into um, the abbreviations T, D, G. And uh, third degree. Okay. All right. Uh, so, and, and then you might say, well, maybe a master is the true representative of the fifth kingdom of nature. But I don't think we can wait that long because by the time we reach the Chohan, he is no longer uh, a man as are the masters. And he's about to enter the kingdom of planetary life. So I would say from the time the third degree occurs, we are actually... Uh, mature members of the um, of the hierarchy. Not as mature as a master, of course, but uh, mature members of the kingdom of souls of the fifth kingdom. Certain expansions of consciousness are possible. Initiations on the astral and lower mental planes can take place, can be taken. Some of the vision can be seen. Uh, the sense of the presence can be felt. The Beloved can be reached. This is uh, this is mystical terminology, and the bliss and joy of this contact can carry with it its abiding joy. But that clear perception which comes from the experience undergone on the Mount of Illumination is different to the joy experienced on the Mount of Blessing. This is interesting. The heart leads in the one, and the head leads in the other. Master DK is making a, a case for how uh, knowledge, uh, thus knowledge, must be added to uh, love. And uh, how interesting, Mount of Illumination, um, the, let's look here and, and, and give a kind of a definition. The Mount of Illumination is the Mount of Transfiguration. I think that is a reasonable uh, assumption. And the Mount of Blessing, well, not the uh, the atomic blessings of the Beatitudes, but earlier blessings. Uh, the Mount of Blessing relates more to the uh, second degree. Uh, to answer categorically, the path of knowledge is that of the occultist and the sage. To be a sage means to be wise, right? Um, to be a sage means to be wise. That of love is uh, that of the mystic and the saint. Well, um, let's just say the love path is not necessarily inferior because eventually universal love has to um, uh, find it self expressing even in the uh, uh, man of knowledge, as he tells us a little earlier in this section. The head or the heart approach is not dependent upon the ray, for both must be known. Interesting. It is uh, perhaps dependent upon a stage of evolution, the mystic phase, um, uh, phase comes first, uh, but some retain that tendency. In other words, why 
our master Jesus and master Serapis uh, bound for um, bound for Sirius. So the head and the heart approach uh, both must be known. Um, the mystic must become the occultist. Uh, the white occultist has been the saintly mystic. It is a progression, uh, but as I said, um, the there are ray tendencies which direct um, the initiates towards the higher paths. And even though the paths are not necessarily ray determined, those paths of higher evolution do tend to accept those on certain rays. For instance, many fifth ray monads uh, may uh, take the uh, second path of magnetic work. Uh, and t those who are masters of the wisdom rather than lords of compassion may be found upon the ray path. Of course, all seven rays will naturally have to be found upon the ray path because what arises is the embodiment of uh, certain uh, rays. The man becomes, for a time, a ray along one of seven lines. True knowledge is intelligent love. Now, this is a, this tells us um, about Venus, the planet of intelligent love. And uh, without uh, the ability to uh, uni uh, un unify with the object under consideration, there uh, is no true knowledge for uh, that loving uh, unification advances deeper knowledge. So true knowledge is intelligent love, the union of heart and mind. And Jupiter is involved in that process as well. Uh, for it is the blending of the intellect and uh, the devotion. That's interesting. Now, we, we do have an interesting case that um, some six-ray uh, souls, wait a second, six, let's see if I can get this. Okay, a six ray soul. Okay, what I'm going to do this is uh, S X R S L, and that's going to be six ray soul. That's one, and then I'm going to make it plural, <sighs> you know, and, until the day comes when six. Ray souls, and this is plural. Six ray souls. The day comes that whenever I press one of these things, it's going to produce the proper phrase. Okay, some six ray souls um, actually merge. Uh, okay, actually merge onto onto. The third ray, and uh, and others onto the second, but um, that shows us the blend of uh, devotion and intellect. Unity is sensed in the heart. Uh, its intelligent application to life has to be worked out through knowledge. Well, think about the solar angels. They are a blend of love and intellect. Um, their, um, shall I capitalize that? <laughs> their generic rays are the second and the fifth, for they, um, they are representatives of Sirius with its uh, fifth ray soul, and they fall sacrificially onto the fifth plane. So, you know, we can assess ourselves, do we have that blend of love and knowledge, or do we find ourselves deficient in one or the other? And if we are deficient, when the uh, solar angel, angel of the presence, is involved in assigning 
the raise, the necessary raise for the coming incarnation, that will be taken into consideration. In Letters on Occult Meditation, there is one example of a mystical type who was uh, insufficient in uh, knowledge and therefore was given or assigned a fifth ray personality. So, in fact, uh, this is under supervision. It is of prime value to recognize the tendency of the life purpose and to know whether the head or the heart method is the objective of a specific life. Realizing, of course, that uh, imbalance, let's just say, uh, or let's just say a, uh, uh, a serious imbalance is uh, corrected uh, in coming incarnations. Uh, a fine uh, spiritual discrimination is needed here, however, lest the glamour of illusion tempt to the path of inertia. That's an interesting phrase because we have two different aspects of misapprehension, glamour and illusion, and he calls it the glamour of illusion. The illusion is so often a question of misinterpretation. Lest the glamour of illusion tempt to the path of inertia. Um, and, uh, you know, what can we say? Uh, lest we trust that everything will be done for us from above. Uh, a reasonable trust and faith is uh, necessary for our integration. And uh, in the Bible, it tells us that your faith has made you whole. So ponder these words with care. Uh, and we have to make sure that a reasonable faith arises and not uh, one that conduces to a supine attitude uh, which becomes uh, tamasic. Uh, rajas is the stage we're in uh, on the way to achieving sattva. Ponder these words with care and see that the question is based on a true foundation and does not grow um, out of a, an inferiority complex the consideration of a brother's enterprise and uh, a consequent jealous tendency or upon a flaccid complacency which negates activity. In other words, uh, in other words, uh, um, we must uh, act and, and, and uh, use the rajasic uh, fe, uh, the Rajasic Guna, as it's called, uh, to, to advance our development and yet remain unselfish, uh, even as that development is advanced. Well, I think uh, if we have a, a reasonable understanding of, okay, and here's a Guna. We'll add that. We have a reasonable understanding of just how broad life really is and how little we know. Um, all uh, tendency to become depressed about our present state, all tendency to look on jealously at the accomplishments of another or to remain complacent and uh, self-satisfied with our present stage of development. Uh, through tr true co-measurement, these things will disappear. Um, you know, it, it, it seems ridiculous to uh, be prideful when one realizes that one is a tiny atom or less in the constitution of great lives. You know, that, uh, that, and that even that great life is but an infinitesimal, of what kind has yet to be determined. I call it sometimes the absolute infinitesimal is, is but an infinitesimal when compared with absolute infinity. So those, uh, the sense of proportion there uh, will prevent us from uh, falling into the trap of pride. As a general rule uh, for the average aspirant to discipleship, note that phrase, Discipleship is not easy to attain, you know, and uh, 
even the stage of Chela in the light, uh, or little Chela, around the first initiation, is not easy of attainment. Everybody assumes that they are definitely an initiate of the first degree, and maybe they can prove that by their adherence to the teaching and their development and their service, but it's not just to be assumed. Uh, as a general rule for the average aspirant to discipleship, for which much of this book, I suspect, is written, it may be safely assumed that the past has seen much application of the heart way. Um, so that's already built in. And that this incarnation, in this incarnation, in the Aryan race, at a time when our communication systems are so greatly expanded and um, a reasonable type of education is spreading all over the world and our technological advancements are amazing compared to the relatively recent past, who knows, in Atlantis. And that in this incarnation, the mental unfoldment is of prime importance. You know, and I would say this, um, as long as we do not forget the heart. Uh, it's a, it is a easy for some DK students, and uh, maybe I've been one, <laughs> to emphasize over much the head approach and neglect the still uh, greater uh, impending universal love of Aquarius and of our soul ray, of our planet and of our solar system. It's as if we deal with love, mind, and then a still greater love, and then who knows, uh, maybe a still greater mind, and on and on. As the ancient scripture says, Seek not, O oh, twice blessed one, to attain the spiritual essence before the mind absorbs. Not thus is wisdom wrought. Who's the twice, twice uh, blessed one? Is it... Uh, is this one who has um, achieved two initiations, perhaps? Let's see. Not thus is wisdom sought. Only he who hath the mind in leash and seeth the world uh, as in a mirror, you know, with uh, detached objectivity, with uh, detached objectivity, can be safely trusted with the inner senses. Uh, and we might say uh, of the higher psychism, only he who knoweth the five senses to be illusion, well, a very partial uh, aspect of reality, let us say, and that naught remaineth save uh, the two ahead. Um, and this would be uh, the common sense and the esoteric, esoteric a sense can be admitted into the secret of the cruciform transposed uh, this may be the um, the reality behind the symbol uh, of the of the hanged man and uh, uh, points to the way that saint uh, Peter uh, asked to be crucified. I suppose uh, his captors uh, gave him that because it would produce even more pain. They being in the uh, sadistic role. The path that is trodden by the server is the path of fire that passeth through the heart and leadeth to the head. Of course, remember, uh, okay, that there is a heart in the head, always, and that uh, the head contains, uh, in fact, uh, all the chakras, uh, or higher correspondences to them, all the higher correspondences to the lower uh, chakras correspondence okay it is not on the path of pleasure nor on the path of pain that liberation uh, may be taken or that wisdom cometh you know in that movie the little buddha <laughs> 
we have uh, Gautama um, listening to a music teacher teach a student um, and uh, the string cannot be too taut lest it break or too loose uh, lest it produce no sound. It is by the transcendence of the two. You know, we're now, so really we're talking about the uh, noble middle path. It is by the transcendence of the two, by the blending of pain with pleasure, and we have to say, as usual, you know, under the fourth ray, FR, FR, F-R-R-Y. Oh, okay. Well, let's see what we can do with that. F-R-R-Y. F-R-R. Okay, that's what it is. Fourth ray of humanity. Um, that this blending occurs. You know, I'm reminded of uh, Vivekananda emerging from the ice cave of Shiva, realizing that uh, the, probably for him at the fourth initiation that pain was as necessary as pleasure. It is by the transcendence of the two and by the blending of pain with pleasure that the goal is reached, that goal that lieth ahead like a point seen in the darkness of a winter's night. Now, and then we go on to some very beautiful description, uh, but uh, we have to transcend the normal pairs of opposites. Perhaps as spirit, we can do this. Uh, personality gives pain. Um, soul gives pleasure of a spiritual kind, uh, and uh, the spirit uh, is neither of those but pure being, in its essence. Anyway, uh, the goal for all of us is like a point of light uh, far ahead. That point of light may call to mind the tiny candle in some attic drear. There's the Tibetan using his old language, you know. <sighs> drear, dreary, mm, depressing, you know. But as the path that leadeth to the light is trodden, and through the blending of the pairs of opposites, and um, in this case, this means the vertical pairs of opposites, the blending of soul and personality, that pinpoint, cold and flickering, because it seems inconstant, groweth with steady radiance till the warm light of some blazing uh, lamp comes to mind. The warm light uh, suggests the warmth of solar fire till the warm light of some blazing lamp cometh to the mind of the wanderer by the way, uh, which is what uh, we are on our pilgrimage. Pass on, O pilgrim, with steady perseverance, this exhortation, which we must listen to in our darker and more discouraged moments. Pass on, O pilgrim, with steady perseverance, no candle is there, no, nor earth lamp fed with oil. Ever the radiance groweth till the path ends. <sighs> Within a blaze of glory, you know, you know like uh, the sun, which is also a symbol of the monad. And the wanderer through the night uh, of plains lower, than the uh, than the monadic plane, um, the wanderer through the night become becometh 
the child of the sun. Why does he use that ancient language? Uh, well, he does because maybe that's really where he was trained uh, in English, uh, being uh, that one of the Eastern masters, at least, who knows English the best. Pass on, O pilgrim, with steady perseverance. No light is there, no earth lamp fed with oil. Ever the radiance groweth till the path ends within a blaze of glory. There is a glorification, of course, at the third degree, but a still higher glorification when we return to the monadic plane, having completed our pilgrimage through the five lower subplanes, cosmic subplanes of Brahma, till the path ends within a blaze of glory and the wanderer through the night. And night is lower vibration, really. Uh, so we understand that night uh, is signified by a lower vibration till the wanderer through the night becometh the child of the sun and entereth, entereth within the portals of that radiant orb. So this is, you know, not only the soul, uh, which is also sun-like, but the highest uh, PV, no, highest uh, periodical vehicle of man, the monadic vehicle, which itself, uh, the Temple of Ezekiel, the Temple, T-O-E, yep, Temple of Ezekiel, there it is. All of the satisfaction when one of my abbreviations actually spells something I intended to in time is forgotten. Well, we've uh, completed, ha, huh, completed, completed chapter three with uh, seven programs. This program, of course, being shorter, there is a tendency for the last program to be shorter as I've been trying to keep my programs to about one hour in length as it's easiest uh, for absorption and easiest uh, for those uh, kind and thoughtful souls who are transcribing this into words. Some of you may like to listen uh, to the video and sort of watch what's going on there and others may prefer to uh, read. And so now a lot of what I've said anyway, and hopefully not the stupid things, are being uh, transcribed and made available to you. And already on Makara, there, uh, there are a growing number of uh, verbal uh, worded uh, transcriptions. So you have plenty to study, plenty to meditate about, and uh, the opportunity for service always is presenting itself. So this will be the end of uh, a treatise on white magic. Uh, what number is it? Okay, number 28, rule 3.7. And the page, uh, well, looks like Page 122, and where did we begin? It's not so far back, so 119 to 122. Okay. So, pages uh, 119 to 122, and we will, the beginning uh, of a treatise on white magic, number 29. Uh, rule uh, 4.1, as we are beginning the fourth rule, starting with page 122. Well, you know, the Tibetan has vast experience. Even 2,000 years ago, he was a great scholar. Was it Arya Sangha in the uh, uh, early Tibetan groups uh, or Buddhist groups? And Master K.H. Uh, too, maybe as Nagarjuna, 
Naga, you know, the wise serpent, Arjuna, the one who battles between the pairs of opposites, Arya, the noble one, Sangha, then the um, community of the Buddha, the noble community of the Buddha. They started earlier and uh, maybe uh, they entered upon the path even later than some of us. How we use our time and our abilities is pretty much up to us and uh, there does have to come a time of awakening when we decide that there's enough waste that has occurred of energies and we have to buy uh, our experience more wisely. So I'll get this out to you and uh, when uh, Brett can, he will be writing the summaries of these various programs. So. There are more that are completed than are now available. That's the general rule because it takes a while to write those summaries. We're almost, we're getting near 30 programs. But I just noticed, uh, I was reviewing this with Victoria and what was it? Uh, in the astrology book, some 291 hour long programs. Well, you know, it's a big project uh, and hopefully. You have people with whom you can share the inquiry as you inquire the way and seek uh, for the answers uh, within your deep self and uh, within the group of uh, soul infusing personalities with whom you work. So uh, much love and many blessings to you and well, who are, you know, who is anybody to give blessings? <laughs> Let's just say the soul in me blesses the soul in you, or at least seeks for your uplift, uh, your increased radiation, your progress, your steps forward, uh, because all of us are really trying to step forward at the same time, and we are ultimately one being in diverse emanations returning to our source where we realize our... Um, inherent and original oneness. See you soon. Bye-bye.